Terence. And I'm Stella. Welcome to Meeple University, how to play Bargain Quest. Bargain Quest is a light-hearted card drafting game for two to six players, in which you will play the role of weapons store proprietors, trying to sell your gear to local monster fighting heroes. If the heroes slay the monsters using your equipment, your store will gain prestige as well as money for selling the goods. If the heroes fail, you still have their money. The game plays until the heroes have collectively defeated three monsters, and the store with the highest combined prestige and money wins the game. Bargain Quest was originally released via Kickstarter in 2017, which is the version we'll be teaching from today. The game was also funded successfully in 2018 for second printing, which included some additional um, modules which we'll leave you to discover for yourself for now. Now, let's learn how to play Bargain Quest. To set up the game, each player takes a store board, folded open, five coins, and one player takes the quest token. Next, set up all of the decks of cards in the common area of the table. Take the monster cards, separate them by the number of the back, choose one from each pack at random to place in a pile, and remove the rest from the game. Take the blue-backed employee cards, shuffle them and place them on the table next to a number of storage upgrade cards and display upgrade cards equaling the number of players in the game. Shuffle the item deck with the brown back and the small adventure cards and place them on the table and take the green-backed hero deck, shuffle that and deal out one hero per player in the game. Place an amount of money equal to the number showing on the purse in the top right hand corner of each hero onto that hero's card. This is the amount of money that that hero enters the game with in order to buy things from your stores. Finally, place the money, prestige and wound tokens in a common area. You're ready to play the game. The game of Bargain Quest is broken into a series of rounds, and each round is broken into six steps, which are outlined in the overview on the back of the rulebook. I'll take you quickly through the overall flow of the round before going through each of these steps in detail. To start each round, players will draft the item cards that they will be selling. Each player drafts four of these cards, passing them around the table, and taking the one they want from what's left. Then, each player simultaneously chooses which of the items in their store they're going to display in the front window. The player who has the most attractive display, indicated by these hearts, gets the first choice of hero to sell goods to. The players then sell goods to those heroes, slipping the goods under the hero, and earning a certain amount of money for each, which is transferred from the hero to the store. The heroes then go out and try to fight the monsters. If they successfully wound the monster and successfully defend themselves, the store will earn prestige. The heroes will then return to the main supply for the next round and earn some extra money. At the end of the round, players have the opportunity to hire employees or buy upgrades for their store using the money that they've earned. Play will then continue into a new round and this will go until three monsters have been defeated. The first phase in each round is the supply phase. The first step of the supply phase is to flip the top card of the monster deck over if there is not a face up card already there. Players should then read the effect on that monster card as it will have some impact on one of the phases of the game. You'll also be able to see the heroes face up that will be available in this round, although they don't take part in this phase. Players may have cards left over in storage from previous rounds and will also have some money. Then for the main part of the supplies phase, each player is dealt four cards. The player looks at them, chooses one that they wish to keep, and adds it to their hand, which is the storage pile. 
hand the rest off to the player on the left, and the player will then receive three cards from the player on his or her right. Player again looks and chooses one of these, and hands the cards on, and so forth, until the player has drawn four cards into his or her hand. In a five or six player game, if you're on to the level two monster, draft around to the right instead of around to the left. This way, all players will receive cards from each other at some point during the game. The second phase of each round is the display phase. Each player will look through his or her cards and choose which he or she wishes to put on display. Players will choose their display cards and place them face down. As a default, a player will only be able to display one card, but a player who has previously bought the display upgrade may be able to place two or three cards into the display. After all players have made their selections, simultaneously players flip them over and reveal the display, showing the number of hearts and the icons and prices as these are the important pieces of information. Next, play proceeds to the shopping phase, which occurs over two steps. Firstly, choosing heroes, and secondly, selling equipment to those heroes. To choose heroes, players first determine the order in which they'll be selecting those heroes, and this is based on the quality of a player's display. Whoever has the most total hearts showing on items in their display gets to take the first choice of hero. In the event of a tie, the player with the highest total cost of items in their display breaks the tie, and if still tied, whoever has the quest token, or moving clockwise around the board from that player, breaks the tie. So in this scenario here, this player would get first choice of hero. The player in that order then chooses any one of the available heroes to have come to his or her store. The only restriction on this is that the hero must have a class icon which matches at least one of the class icons shown in the player's display area. So in this scenario here, the player would only have access to the Barbarian or, because of the special text effect here, the Nobleman. Neither of these two heroes will enter this store. Note that some heroes have multiple class icons. The player then takes the hero and places it next to his or her player board. The player will then proceed to the player with the next most hearts with the tiebreaker as described before. If it comes time for a player to choose a hero but there is no valid hero left on the board because there are no matching class icons, that player loses his or her place in the queue. The player waits until all other players have made their choices and then gets whatever is left, regardless of the class icons. If multiple players find themselves in the same situation, then they choose from what's left in turn order based on the number of hearts, as before. Whichever player takes the last hero off the board takes the quest tile until the next round. Next, you will determine what items you're going to sell to your hero. There are a few restrictions on how you do this. Firstly, you are not allowed to sell items out of your display area. This is part of the balance of the game. If you put good items into your display area to get the best hero, you may not have good items left to sell them. Then, you can only sell items to a hero if the item has a class icon matching that hero. So in this case, the Barbarian is not going to buy the Ice Scroll, but you could sell the Magic Helmet or the Steel Sword. Finally, heroes can only buy what they can afford. So in this case here, the player has $30 worth of valid items, but the Barbarian has only $25. So you must make a choice. In this case, the player may sell the Magic Helmet to the Barbarian, and the Barbarian's $20 would be transferred from the Barbarian card to the player's store. Any items left over, turn face down and remain in the player's hand. Any money that your hero has left over stays on its card. All of the hero cards also have a text effect which will come into play at some point during the round. 
Some occur immediately, some will occur at a later phase. So keep track of what your hero's power is. The fourth phase of each round is the adventure phase. And this is where the heroes will go out and attempt to kill the monsters. To start off the adventure phase, deal one random adventure card to each of the heroes. This will give a modifier on their strength and defense. Then, starting with the player with the quest token and going clockwise around the table, you will resolve combat with the monster. Firstly, you will do attack. Count up the number of axe icons on the hero's card, items, and the adventure card. In this case, it's four. Compare it with the monster's defense value, which in this case is also four. If the hero meets or exceeds the monster's value, give the monster a wound, and the store gains one prestige for selling good weapons which helped that monster be wounded. Then the monster fights back. Add up the hero's defense total based on the shield icons on all of these cards. In this case, it's three. If that number meets or exceeds the monster's attack value, then the hero successfully defends himself or herself from the monster. If this happens, once again, your shop gains one prestige. Alternatively, if the hero fails to successfully attack the monster, the monster gains no wound and the store gains no prestige. If the hero fails to successfully defend against the monster, the store still gains no prestige and the hero is killed in battle. Discard the hero as well as the adventure card and all of its item cards. All of the other heroes in the game then have their attempts to both attack and defend against the monster giving prestige to the store if successful, and being killed in battle if unsuccessful at defending. The monster may gain multiple wounds through this process. After all of the heroes have had their chance to attack, firstly, check to see if any of them successfully hit the monster. If the monster received no wounds during that round, give it one wound, because all the heroes banding together, even if they're individually incompetent, can still do some damage to the monster. In a five or six player game, if no one wounded the monster, give it two wounds, and if only one player wounded the monster, give it one wound. That way the monster will always receive at least two wounds in a round in a five or six player game. Next, count up the number of wounds that the monster has. If it equals or exceeds the number of players in the game, then the monster's been killed. If it is less than the number of players in the game, then the monster is still alive until the next round. If the monster is still alive, look at the amount of money in the bottom left corner of the card and give that much money to any heroes that are still left in the game. This is their reward for coming back alive. And this will be the amount of money that they have available to spend in the next round of shopping. If the monster has been defeated, give all of the surviving heroes the higher number of money shown in the bottom right corner of the card. Then discard that monster card from the game. You'll flip the new one over in phase one of the next round. It's important to remember that all heroes will get the chance to attack the monster in each round, even if it's already reached the minimum number of wounds required to kill it. This way the monster could have well more than the minimum number of wounds before it is killed. You only check this at the end of the adventure phase. To finish up the adventure phase, discard all items that were equipped to heroes, whether they survived or not. Return all of the adventure cards to the deck and reshuffle it, ready for the next round. And return surviving heroes to the center of the table. Then from the hero deck, draw back up so that you have one hero per player in the game and give the new hero's money equal to the purse on the top right of the card. The fifth phase of the round is the upgrade phase in which each player has the opportunity to buy one employee or upgrade. To set up this phase, draw two employee cards from the top of the blue employee deck. Then, Starting with the player who has the quest token and going clockwise around the table, 
players have the opportunity to make one purchase. This can be purchasing an employee, in which case the player adds it to the employee portion of his or her player area, paying the cost to the bank, and then immediately replacing it with a new employee from the top of the deck. Or, instead of getting an employee, the player could purchase an upgrade to the store. This can be either a display upgrade, which allows the player to add extra cards into the display, or a storage upgrade, which lets a player store additional cards between rounds. And we'll talk about the storage phase in a minute. If a player already has a storage or display upgrade card, he or she can spend another 10 on a subsequent round to flip it over to the double upgrade side. Storage and display cannot be upgraded further from this, and a player can never have a second copy of the same upgrade card. Players can make no more than one purchase in each round. After this phase is over, any leftover customer cards which weren't purchased are shuffled back into the customer deck. But note that during the game you'll be discarding customers, as some of them are single use, and they'll go into a discard pile which is not reshuffled until the deck is empty. The final phase of each round is the storage phase. Each player gathers up any unsold items, including display items, and then can store a maximum of one card, plus one card for every storage upgrade that he or she has purchased, in the storage area. Any additional item cards are discarded. Once all players have completed storage, proceed to the next round. At the end of the adventure phase in which the level 3 monster is killed, the game ends immediately, skipping the upgrade and storage steps in that round. To total up the final scores, players gain 1 point for each prestige that they've collected during the game, and then 1 point for every $10 collected during the game rounded down. So in this case, 8 plus 7 is 15 points. The player with the highest score wins, and in the event of a tie, the player with the most money wins, and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Bargain Quest. We hope that you enjoyed the video, and we hope that you enjoy playing. Please click on the Meeple to subscribe to our channel if you'd like to hear more from Meeple University.